So we know that when glucose is broken down in aerobic cell respiration, we produce ATP molecules. So some number are produced in glycolysis, and then we generate the remaining ATP molecules in a citric acid cycle and on the electron transport chain. But the question is, what is the number of ATP molecules that we actually generate when a single glucose is broken down in aerobic cell respiration? So this is what I'd like to discuss in this lecture. And let's begin with glycolysis. So glycolysis takes place entirely in the cytoplasm of the cell. And so let's suppose this is the cytoplasm and this is the mitochondria. Now, a single glucose is broken down into two pyruvate molecules in glycolysis. And in the process, we also generate two ATP molecules and we produce two NADH molecules. Now, the ATP molecules can be used directly by the cell to power some type of biological process in that cell. But to produce ATP molecules from NADH, the NADH must move onto the electron transfer chain found on the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. So we have the outer membrane, the inner membrane, we have the electron transport chain, and this is the matrix of the mitochondria, and this is the intermembrane space. Now, the question is, how many ATP molecules do we actually form when a single NADH is transported onto the electron transport chain from the cytoplasm? Well, the answer to that question basically depends on the type of shuttle that the cell actually uses. Some cells, such as skeleton muscle cells, use a shuttle known as the glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle. And in this particular case, the high energy electrons are transported onto complex three of the electron transport chain. And so what that means is we bypass complex one. And in this particular case, 1.5 ATP molecules will be formed when a single NADH produced in glycolysis moves onto the electron transport chain. So that means because we form two NADH molecules, two multiplied by 1.5 is 3, and so 3 ATP molecules will be formed per 2 NADH molecules produced in glycolysis in cells that utilize the G3P shuttle to actually move the NADH onto the electron transport chain. So where do we get that number? Well, when the two electrons from NADH are ultimately transported onto complex three, we know that complex three of the electron transport chain actually moves a net amount of two H plus ions. And so actually we're moving them from the matrix into the intermembrane space. So it's in this direction. And then when the electrons are moved onto this particular complex, complex four, we move a net quantity of four H plus. And so we basically create a proton gradient where we move six H plus ions. And so when these six H plus ions will move from the intramembrane space back into the matrix, this ATP synthase complex 5 will use them to actually generate the ATP molecules. And remember, we need 4 H plus ions. So 4 H plus ions have to move through complex 5 to actually generate a single ATP molecule. And what that means is when the 6 plus H ions move through ATP synthase, we need four of them to actually generate a single ATP molecule. And so six divided by four gives us 1.5 ATP molecules are generated when the six H plus ions move when a single NADH is oxidized by the electron transport chain. Now, what about the other shuttles? So cells such as cardiac muscle cells, so the heart cells and liver cells utilize a slightly different shuttle known as malate aspartate shuttle. And the thing about this shuttle is the high energy electrons produced by or found on the NADH produced in the glycolytic pathway ultimately end up being transported onto complex one. And complex one essentially pumps a net amount of 
AT, uh, 4H plus ions into the intermembrane space. And so here we have 4 plus 2 plus 4, that gives us a total of 10. And so 10 divided by 4 gives us 2.5. And so what that means is the NADH molecules produced in glycolysis in cells that utilize the malate aspartate shuttle basically generate a net amount of 2.5 ATP molecules per single NADH that is oxidized by the electron transport chain. And so in cells that utilize malate aspartate shuttle, we produce 2 multiplied by 2.5, so 5 ATP molecules. So this is the number of ATP that we produced in glycolysis. So the two ATP molecules are produced directly and then we also form the ATP via the oxidative phosphorylation that takes place on the electron transport chain. And this ranges anywhere from three to five ATP depending on the type of shuttle that the cell actually uses. Now, the two pyruvate molecules produced in the cytoplasm then move into the matrix of the mitochondria. And in the matrix, we have pyruvate decarboxylation that transforms the two pyruvate into two acetyl coenzyme A molecules. And in the process, we also generate the two NADH molecules. And the two NADH molecules, because they're produced directly in the matrix of the mitochondria, they move directly onto complex one. And so a single NADH oxidized by the electron transport chain in the matrix goes through all these complexes. And so we pump out these 10 H plus ions. And that means a single NADH oxidized by the electron transport chain produced in pyruvate decarboxylation produces 2.5 ATP molecules. And because we have two of these, two multiplied by 2.5 gives us five ATP molecules produced from this process. Now, the majority of the NADH are produced in the citric acid cycle. So we have a net result of two GTP, six NADH, and two FADH2 molecules that are produced when two of these acetyl coenzyme A molecules are fed into the citric acid cycle. Now, the two GTP are basically catalyzed by special enzyme into two ATP molecules. And so those are the two ATP molecules shown here. Now, the six NADH, because they're produced directly in the matrix of the mitochondria, each one of these NADHs produces 2.5 ATP molecules and six multiplied by 2.5 gives us 15. Now recall that when a single FADH2 is oxidized, <coughs> is, <coughs> is oxidized by the electron transport chain, it is oxidized by complex two. And so we bypass complex one. And that means when a single FADH2 is oxidized by complex two, complex two doesn't actually pump any protons. And so those electrons extracted from FADH2 ultimately end up being transported onto complex three. So we bypass complex one. And so six, proton, uh, six protons total are pumped. And so six divided by four gives us 1.5. And so 1.5 ATP molecules are produced per single FADH2 that that is oxidized by the electron transport chain. And so because we have two of them, two multiplied by 1.5 gives us three. So to summarize, we have anywhere from two plus three, five, to two plus five, seven, ATP molecules produced from glycolysis that includes the two ATP and the NADHs that are basically oxidized by the electron transport chain. We have a net amount of five ATP produced by pyruvate carboxylation when the NADHs are oxidized by the electron transport chain and the total for the citric acid cycle. So we have two, three, and 15, that's 20. So 20 plus five, that's 25. So we have two and three. So 25 plus five, that gives us 30. Or in the case of the malate aspartate shuttle, we have 32. So a net result of 30 to 32 ATP molecules are formed from one glucose molecule that is metabolized, broken down in aerobic cell respiration.